Hello and welcome to Bespoken. My name is Paul Anthony. And I'm CP. And today we're looking at Winston Churchill's fragrances and if they're still relevant to be worn today. So Charles Philippe, there are three reported fragrances that Winston Churchill wore. Two of which we have here and one from uh, the House of Creed that we do not have here. I was wondering if you could uh, share a little bit more information on them. So the one from the House of Creed, which we'll talk about a bit later, is Stabaron Millésime that was released in 2010, said to be a homage to Winston Churchill himself. But what he would have actually wore during the period, and I believe you know that for a fact, it's been reported that these were worn by him. Sure, correct, yep. Are Blenheim Bouquet by Penhaligans, as well as Floris's Special 127. These are both uh, London houses, which uh, Creed was actually originally, so... Originally, but not <laughs> anymore. Maybe that's may, uh, what influenced his decision on wearing these fragrances, because they were readily available in London at the time that he would have been living there. Um, at the turn of the 20th century. Mm. So let's talk a little bit about these fragrances. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think the main point of this video is like, we're going to go over and there's uh, actual individual reviews below, but we really want to touch on whether you guys um, can wear these today still and if they're, if they're useful being in some cases over 100 years old. Mm. I think we kind of got these on the right side because my favourite is Blenheim Bouquet, but I think you have an affinity for uh, Floris 127. Correct, yeah, I think this is more wearable, I think it's a little deeper, um, mm. a little more usable. Um, but again, let's uh, turn the, the, uh, the mic over to you so you can kind of explain both a little bit. Well, Penhaligon's Blenheim Bouquet is more of a eau de cologne. It's, although it's an eau de toilette in concentration, it acts like an eau de cologne in that it really dries down very quickly without too many uh, phases of fragrances. Um, that is to say that it's quite linear. You have uh, lemon, lavender and lime on the head, which then you'll maybe get some pepper, pine and labdanum musk in the base. And it goes through this very quickly. So sometimes you don't want that in a fragrance, but sometimes you do if you want to wear an eau de cologne, which is around the house, after washing, you know, cleaning up. It's a great refreshing scent that you can just splash on on a hot day. You know, it's very much reminiscent of uh, Moore and Wurtz's 4711, which we reviewed here, and you can see below in the description as well. Floris, now this is a much deeper fragrance, as Paul was saying. Uh, we did a test earlier using the Bespoke Unit Fragrance Formula. Uh, it's very similar with uh, lavender and citrus in the head, so you have bergamot, lavender and petit grain, which is kind of earthy, kind of bitter. And then as you get to a heart, which this one doesn't have, uh, geranium, rose, ylang lang and jasmine. So it's very floral hard, although it's keeping some of that petit grain in the head, and then when you get to the base you have earthy patchouli and labdanum, which is again very reminiscent of the first one. Overall they're very similar, but their usage is very different. Yeah, I think this is definitely more floral, more mm. aromatic, and this is definitely more citrusy. Oh, you yeah. know, I think they both sit well in that spring-summer mm. uh, seasonality bracket. Um, but yeah, as we say, there are four reviews of these below. Really, if we want to kind of zoom forward to the real question is, are these fragrances wearable today? That's a big question, isn't it? Well, I'd say that this one is, uh, so the Blenheim Bouquet is wearable, but only under certain conditions. You could, it doesn't last very long. That's its real weakness. No, I mean, I've had it on the hand for about 30 minutes now, and I can definitely get that nice citrusy smell to it. But mm. I know when I've worn it, especially in the summer when you're, you know, sweating and perspiring a little mm. bit, it does dissipate very quickly. Mm. Uh, it might be kind of one of those ones where, you know, you get back home from work, um, a bit flustered, you want to go in the garden, have a glass of wine or a whiskey on a, on a warm evening in the summer, and it might be nice just to kind of spritz yourself and feel a little fresh, mm. you know? It's not really a typical uh, composition compared to modern masculine fragrances, so don't expect something that is particularly, I mean, it's not a statement as such, but it is very, very refreshing. And it's something that you could pick up over other odors, which are, wouldn't be very pleasant, such as maybe even stale tobacco, which maybe is why 
Winston Churchill would wear it. It's something that he could pick out, which could be quite refreshing for him. It's still sure. definitely wearable today, but more something that you'd introduce into your grooming regimen, you know, after a shower or on a hot day, put some on a handkerchief maybe and just dab that around the neck, or even, like 40 years set up in 11, put it on your pillow before you go to sleep. Sure, and then talking about the wearability of a special 127. Now this one I think that you could actually introduce into your everyday life. It's a much sure. more approachable fragrance, which is reminiscent of some other uh, more retro fragrances such as uh, Aramis, in fact. Oh yeah, that we just recently uh, included in our top four fragrances. Mm. Uh, you can see that link below. That being said, it's not as overpowering and it's definitely not as, <laughs> as Aramis, <laughs> but it's actually quite rare, wearable today. The earthy labdanum patchouli in the base is something that you'd expect for more retro fragrances, but it's definitely something that's wearable and quite Yeah, nice I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a touch um, soapy, mm -hmm. um, but it definitely has that nice kind of floral to it, that lightness to it. Mm. Uh, so yeah, it would definitely be one that, um, I think it's a nice office fragrance. Oh, it's yeah. kind of not offensive, um, not overpowering, but just pleasant. Mm. I know? wouldn't wear it casually though, it's just too uh, too refined for casual wear, but I wouldn't sure. wear it maybe formally either. Yeah, for the office, that's perfect. Sure. And then finally, with the fragrance we have missing, that was one that uh, Churchill frequently wore, was the uh, Creed, um, Tabarom Minizim. Tabarom, uh, I won't even attempt to say <laughs> <laughs> My French needs serious work. But uh, this was a, a re release in 2010, and 10, I yeah. believe. Um, you know, and it has like tobacco notes. Mm. Uh, and again, when Churchill would have been using this, um, these two would have kind of masked or been a pleasant smell mm. beyond his tobacco smoke. You got to remember when people were. Uh, at work back then or at their gentlemen's clubs um, they would have been surrounded by smoke all mm. the time so these would have definitely risen above that to be something pleasant oh yeah definitely. where if you're trying to be an homage fragrance to that i don't mm. think it's a historical representation but as you say an homage to the man and the lifestyle itself so mm. we wanted to include these because there's definitely a resurgence in uh, vintage oh, colognes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So these are probably two you may want to check out. Um, links below on where you can buy them, as I said, as well with links on the specific reviews. So, with that being said, yes, we do believe that these fragrances are relevant today, even though they are well over 100 years old each. So, with that being said, my name is Paul Anthony. And I'm CP. And from all of us here at Bespoke Unit, see you next time. Take care.